Hello coders and thanks for joining us for our second C sharp challenge. Let's go ahead and talk about what this challenge is going to be. All right. So the challenge is to write a phone book class that allows you to add and remove contacts and print all contacts currently in the phone book. I'm going to give you guys a hint on this one. You'll want to use a struct for contacts and store the contacts in a list, okay? And to give you even more of a hint, we're going to come down to main and I'll show you guys how I did mine how I set mine up. Um, basically, I create my new phone book and then I have these uh, I have these methods in my phone book class called add contact, remove contact, and display all contacts, okay? And what I do for my add contacts is I pass it a string and a number, um, and for my remove contact, I just pass it a string for name, okay? Um, so that's gonna be all I'm gonna show you guys. This one's pretty tough, so Give, your, give yourselves plenty of time to do it. Um, again, I encourage you not to, to search online for, um, for hints. If you want, um, all, the, all the information for this challenge could be covered in my tutorials. If you want, you can go back and look at those uh, if you need any reminders on, any, on anything. Okay, so go ahead, and I'm, go ahead and pause the video. Come back whenever you have it done. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I did it. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to my phone book class. Uh, let's scroll up, and as you can see, I used a struct for my contact. And inside my contact struct, I have a long phone number and a string for name, and then my constructor for my contact is, a, um, is, is an overloaded constructor that's, that's going to allow me to uh, pass name and phone number as parameters. And then I use this.name equals name, so this.name don't be intimidated by that. All it is, is all it's saying is that um, this dot name is looking at this name variable, and name is referring to this name variable. Okay, so this dot name is ref referring to the struct's name, and this name is referring to the local scope string name here and the parameter list. Okay, so the purpose of uh, even using this is because um, both of these variables are the exact same and it prevents the um, compiler from getting confused on which variable to use. Okay, so this is my contact struct. Then we come down to the phone book class and I have a list type, uh, a list of type contact called contacts. Then I have my phone book constructor which initializes my contacts list. Then I have my add contact method which takes in a, which takes in a string name and a long phone number. And in it, I create a new contact called new contact and pass in the name and the phone number to the contacts uh, constructor. And then I use my list and I, and I add this new contact to it. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Uh, I know that this part is pretty tricky if you've, if you've never done anything like this before. So definitely, um, definitely one of the best pieces of advice I can give to you guys is keep it simple. Okay, keep your code simple. You don't have to overcomplicate things. Uh, whenever you think you need to oftentimes. Okay, now my display all contacts method is going to, um, it's going to iterate through a for loop, uh, starting from zero and going up to contacts.count. Um, and what I'm doing is just doing a simple console.write line here. Okay, so nothing fancy there. Then we come down to the remove contact. Now this one can definitely be tricky. Um, I'm just passing the name here. And what we do is we create a for loop, and it's a, it's important how we do this, okay? So we create a for loop that starts off at contacts.count minus one. Now, remember, this i is gonna be used in our indexing, okay? So any index that's too large is going to throw an exception out of bounds error, saying that the, the index doesn't exist. Okay, so remember that for our lists, our index, indices start from zero, and then they go to one, two, three. Okay, with zero being the first element in the list. All right, so if zero is the first element in the list, then we wanna make sure that we don't go past zero whenever we're decrementing, because in this loop, in this for loop we're decrementing. Now, why am I starting from the end of the list? Why am I starting from the last position in the list? Because when we're removing, see I'm, I'm saying, if, if the contact's name equals the name that we're trying to remove, then I say contacts.remove at i, which is the index that we're removing at. And so the way the remove at function works is it will remove that item, that the, the item at that index, and it's going to resize your uh, it's going to resize your list. It's going to shift all, all of your um, it's going to shift all of your items in that list back 
one index. And so you can see that if you remove something from the middle of the list, all your indices are going to get shifted. And this for loop is going to be iterating across things it's already seen before, or it's going to skip elements. Okay. Now, if we start at the end of the, if we start at the end, and work our way to the beginning, if we remove something, uh, it's not going to affect. It's not going to. Uh, we're not going to worry, have to worry about any sort of skipping because everything that is getting shifted is stuff that we've already looked at. Okay, so this one's definitely sort of tricky. If you need more information about it, feel free to contact me. Leave uh, comments in the comment section below. But that is going to um, that's going to do it for the phone book class. So let's go ahead and run it and uh, see what we get. Well, first I'll talk about main real quick. So I'm just adding contacts and then I remove Jennifer. Um, and then I display all the contacts. Okay, so we should see all of these contacts except for Jen Jennifer. So if I debug and start debugging, then let's see what we get. Okay, so basically what mine does is it shows the contact and then prints the name and their number. All right, and we don't see Jennifer here, which is good because we removed her. All right. So that's the that's going to conclude our second challenge guys. If you guys did that one on your own, very good job. Uh, you should definitely be proud of yourselves. Either that or these challenges just aren't hard enough. If you like these types of videos, drop a like for us so that we know and we can keep doing more. But as always, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.